Let's head around the inside politics table, ask our great reporters to get you out ahead of the big political news just around the corner. Neil Malika Henderson. One of the things that candidates need to do when it comes to New Hampshire is study up on the heroin epidemic uh, that's plaguing that state. It's now the leading cause of death, along with uh, other drugs. More than traffic deaths, uh, heroin uh, is, is taking people's lives. It's come up quite frequently in this last uh, forum. For instance, it, it came up. Rubio had to address it. Uh, Kelly Ayotte has taken to the Senate floor talking about this scourge of heroin. Uh, and next week, Hillary Clinton will be in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, she has an, uh, an opiate forum where, where it will also come up. It's just important, I think, for these candidates. Uh, sure, it's a national campaign, but when it comes to these state-by-state uh, -state issues, it's very much a local issue. And one of the great values of town halls, people bring up what's on their mind, where they live. Ron? There was a time not so long ago when big presidential fields were winnowed by small events, things like early endorsements in key states, early money in small donors, crowd sizes in earned media, and the famous Iowa straw poll. Those days are dying. Um, that imperfect system is that focused on grassroots organizing and the ability to build momentum in states where voters pay attention, where your medal is really tested as being replaced by a more nationalized system, where, where folks are jockeying to get into the national polls, where they're doing outrageous things like eating bacon off of uh, machine guns, where they're saying outrageous things like the president is the equivalent of, uh, of Hitler in marching folks to the uh, Jews to the, the ovens. They're desperate for attention. Let's notice are things like John Kasich putting $2 million into New Hampshire just to get his national poll numbers up to get into the debate, that's $2 million he's not going to have when Jeb Bush decides to go after him on, on uh, Obamacare in New Hampshire. So the next time you hear a really outrageous claim, the next time you see a candidate do something really outrageous, know that there's a method to their madness. And they're probably trying to get into the next debate. Exactly. <laughs> or Meckler. One of the biggest issues in the Democratic primary is college affordability. It's a source of incredible anxiety for the middle class and a huge issue for young voters who the Democrats really need to turn out big for them again. On tomorrow in New Hampshire, Hillary Clinton will be laying out her college affordability plan. Uh, there's a lot of anticipation ahead of this. Um, her competitors, uh, Governor O'Malley and Senator Sanders, have already laid out plans for this. And the question from the left really is whether her plan will be sort of a big, bold idea that really gets at it. She's under a lot of pressure from from her left flank in order to, to come up with some big, um, vigorous government solutions to big problems like this. So we'll see what she has to say. Nice. Anytime candidates talk about policy, agree or disagree, policy <laughs> debates are good <laughs> debates. And, and for her, this is sort of her sweet spot, not, not talking about email, talking about policy. We'll see how that one goes, Jeff Zeleny. <laughs> We've heard a lot of talk about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Well, this week, we actually could see them at least in the same environment, the Iowa State Fair. It starts on Thursday in Des Moines, and uh, they're both uh, perhaps going to be there at the end of the weekend. But the Iowa State Fair is one of those many venues where uh, politicians go to test their mettle. The Des Moines Register Soapbox is still a venue where every candidate or most candidates stop by to give policy speeches. Martin O'Malley will be there uh, later this week and some others. So keep your eye on Des Moines, Iowa, the Iowa State Fair to see what happens. Several candidates along the uh, way have, uh, you know, we've gotten glimpses of what's wrong with their uh, campaigns there. Fred Thompson is one example. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, we should keep our eye on Des Moines uh, this week at that Iowa State Fair. And don't forget fried Snickers. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> bacon wrapped, chocolate wrapped, fried everything. Uh, if you do go listen to the candidates and bring your doctor. I'll close with this. I'll close with this. Worries about the damage Trump is causing the GOP brand is stirring some criticism now of the Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus. The chairman said last Sunday he's confident the party will have a nominee by March or very early in April. Now a good number of party strategists think that's wishful thinking anyway, even more so now that Trump has upended things. Priebus also downplayed Trump's debate night refusal to rule out a third party run and many in the party think he should have been tougher. Now, much of this can be chalked up to jittery Republicans looking for someone to blame. But how he handles Trump is now a big part of the chairman's job evaluation.